Hi, I'm Eric. Um, here to tell you about Rlib, scalable RL for TensorFlow, PyTorch, and beyond. So a bit about me. So I'm currently a software engineer at AnyScale and a finishing PhD student at UC Berkeley. Um, I'm the team lead for Raycore and Rlib at AnyScale. And in my research, I work on uh, applied RL and ML systems work. Before grad school, I spent a number of years in industry at, at Databricks and at Google. Uh, so I'm gonna start this talk by telling you a bit about reinforcement learning and the problem RLib is solving. This talk will also cover the current project status and upcoming developments in RLib. It's not gonna be a really in-depth talk about RLib. For that, we have an advanced RLib talk that uh, Sven Mika is also giving in this summit. So why RL? Uh, just as background, the main difference between RL and supervised learning is that reinforcement learning has the potential to more directly optimize for end objectives. So for example, where in supervised learning, you might make predictions about data. For example, given uh, some images, you might make predictions about the category of items in the images. Um, in RL, uh, you're instead training an agent or a policy to take actions in some environment. Um, and uh, based on the actions the agent takes, the environment provides feedback back to the agent in terms of observations and rewards. And over time, the agent is going to learn to improve the actions it takes uh, in the environment to maximize the reward it receives. So reinforcement learning is a, a very uh, old field, but it's actually only recently that when combined with deep learning that it's started kind of working for real in, in, in many applications. So you're probably aware of uh, you know, Alpha Zero, which uh, has achieved you know, state-of-the-art performance, a superhuman performance in the game of Go. Uh, but Arl has uh, found success in many other domains, such as e-trading, uh, ads optimizations, uh, database query optimization, uh, systems control, and uh, circuit layout, and, and many other besides these. Like supervised learning, though, reinforcement learning scales with compute. So many of the recent successes in reinforcement learning, such as Alpha Zero, um, depend not only on algorithmic innovations, but also leveraging specialized hardware and distributed compute clusters. So what this means really is that the software for reinforcement learning is also quite important. And this is the problem RLib is trying to solve, um, providing a unified reinforcement learning library that can easily scale to large clusters. What we found is that different users of RL care about different features because they are focusing on different aspects of reinforcement learning. For example, teams of research engineers care both about building RL systems and the, applica the applications. Academic researchers care primarily about the algorithms. And um, applied scientists and product engineers are trying to leverage systems and algorithms to you know, build their application. To draw an analogy with supervised learning, um, in that field, there are many deep learning frameworks that provide common ways to express and scale tensor computations. And basically, all kinds of users um, use these common frameworks, uh, for example, PyTorch and TensorFlow. So RLib serves the same role for reinforcement learning. It provides uh, common APIs for expressing and scaling reinforcement learning training uh, no matter what your use case is. So what is RLib? Um, so it's an open source library. And from the user perspective, it has kind of three main layers. The first layer is um, a unified API that makes reinforcement learning accessible from a variety, a variety of applications. So this is, of course, including benchmarks environments such as OpenAI Gym. But RLib also supports multi-agent scenarios, um, serving policies to external systems, and processing uh, and learning on offline or batch batch RL data. Second, it has a collection of uh, best-in-class reference algorithms. This spans uh, model-free and model-based algorithms and other ones. And, and finally, it has primitives for implementing a new reinforcement algorithms. And you might care about this if you're a researcher or a, a RL engineer. So I'm gonna first talk about RLib's unified API. Um, as an example of the benefits of a unified API, uh, here we look at an example application called uh, Nero MMO. So this is a massively multi-agent game environment uh, released recently by OpenAI uh, for research purposes. Uh, so despite being a kind of a, you know, a simulated game, this is actually an extremely challenging application in RL terms. Uh, not only, you're not only training one agent to act, you're training uh, kind of a group of agents or um, to compete or cooperate with each other. There are a dynamic number of agents in this environment um, since agents can kind of you know, live and die. And agents receive complex structured observations. It's not just you know, one single vector of features or a single image. 
but it's it's like a real world uh, system where you have metrics, telemetry, and so on um, about uh, nearby uh, entities. Uh, despite this complexity, however, NeuroMMO can basically train out of the box on RLib, and this is possible because RLib's APIs are general enough to cover uh, this application. And this is something no other um, R library can do because they don't have a unified API. Yeah, so why is having a unified API important? So beyond the obvious you know, software engineering reasons, there, I think there's a couple key points. So first is easy scalability. Uh, any application that runs on RLib can kind of automatically scale with, with the RAID distributed system. Um, in fact, thanks to the scalability of RLib, um, the neural MMO authors found that like right after they integrated with RLib, they were able to uh, get new state of the art performance just through scale. A second reason is that um, a unified API allows easy experimentation for applied use cases, um, even if you don't need to scale. This is because for an applied problem, you're experimenting with many different ways to express a problem in reinforcement learning terms. So you want a lot of flexibility to tinker with different approaches, for example, multi-agent decompositions, different model types, and so on, which RLib allows kind of in one library without needing to switch between different software frameworks. The second thing that RLib provides is um, a collection of uh, reference algorithms. So here's a list of uh, algorithms from the documentation of RLib at rlib.io. Um, RLib provides a cohesive API across uh, more than 14 TensorFlow algorithms and 18 PyTorch algorithms. Um, it lets you easily scale all of these algorithms from a laptop to a cluster and also customize these, these algorithms for complex use cases, for example, multi-agent RL as needed. Um, so to give some credit uh, here, the, these algorithms come from a variety of uh, community contributors, obviously RightSlab and Inscale, but also a number of other companies and university groups. So uh, yeah, we're very grateful for these contributions because obviously you know, a single organization has a hard time uh, having enough expertise to maintain all these different types of algorithms. Finally, if you're an algorithms researcher or need to deeply customize an algorithm, RLib provides primitives for building completely novel RL algorithms that seamlessly fit in with RLib's unified API. As you can imagine, uh, Primitives for building RL algorithms is a, is a complex topic. So here I'm gonna dive specifically into how RLib scales algorithms to a cluster. And the example I'm gonna use for this is scaling the basic uh, policy gradients algorithm. If you're not familiar with policy gradients, uh, not to worry, the math aside, the computation pattern is actually really simple. In fact, it's just shown on this slide here. Um, the steps are basically as follows. We're gonna start from the, um, the left uh, so first is parallel rollouts. So with the current policy, uh, we want to generate uh, rollouts from the environment in parallel. So basically, we want to gather experiences given the current policy. The next step is to combine these experiences together into a single data set with a concatenate operator. We want to take this concatenated data and use it to update our policy uh, with stochastic gradient descent. Finally, we broadcast a new policy to our workers and report metrics at repeat. So uh, to get this to work in RLib, there's a couple of steps. First, you, uh, you need to express the series of steps in RLib. And RLib has a, a domain-specific language that lets you easily do this. And that's like pretty, pretty much it. Uh, once you do that, uh, RLib will automatically schedule and execute the, the algorithm with Ray. To make this more concrete, uh, this is actually what the DSL looks like. Uh, this is actually copy-pasted from the policy gradients uh, implementation. So I'll, I'll walk through it so that what is the execution plan for this policy gradients algorithm? So this is a distributed plan that runs across uh, many workers or potentially many machines. And it looks like this. So first uh, we have a set of workers uh, and we're gonna tell these workers to do uh, parallel rollouts, uh, work so rollouts in parallel to get experiences. The next step is we're gonna take those rollouts and we're combine them together into a batches of some minimum batch size uh, specified by the configuration. So this is the concat batches operator there. And the next step is we're going to uh, apply those uh, apply this train one step operator to update, do one step of stochastic gradient descent um, on the policy again these experiences. And uh, this this series of steps will just repeat over and over until the policy is trained uh, kind of to your uh, you know uh, target uh, reward. And of course we return a standard metrics reporting wrapper around around this plan that reports metrics in a standard way across all, all, all RL algorithms. 
This distributed execution DSL is a new feature of uh, RLib 1.0 and makes it much, much easier to write new distributed algorithms. Uh, we have actually already ported all the internal uh, RLib algorithms to this new paradigm, and it's a huge simplification. For example, uh, Apex and Impala, two of the more uh, complex high-performance distributed algorithms in RLib, have gone from four to 500 lines of code to just one or 200 lines of code. So keep in mind, this is real production code with you know, debugging log statements, uh, met metrics reporting, and so on. So this is a really huge, huge simplification in terms of readability. Uh, so I want to also give an update on the, the RLib community. So uh, in, for Ray, we have a, a, a Slack um, and there's the RLib Slack channel, which has more than a thousand users. So you can join this at rlib.io. Uh, we've seen a steady growth in user engagement on GitHub. Um, users have reported many novel use cases that help guide our roadmap. And uh, yeah, there's just been a lot of growth in issues reported about RLib on, uh, on GitHub, which is a measure of user engagement. So this graph is showing the issues, new issues reported uh, RLib specific for, specifically for RLib per month across the past two years. And as you can see, we're seeing an accelerated um, number of issues per month, um, especially in the past uh, few months. RLib is also a part of several uh, industry uh, RL platforms today, um, uh, so several of which are public, and it's also used internally by many more. So some of the uh, public ones are Amazon SageMaker RL, uh, Azure uh, RL, uh, Bonsai, and SkyMind. So what's next for RLib? Uh, here are some of the top issues raised by users. First, we hear there's a lot of community interest in frameworks like PyTorch and, and JAX. Um, users are also very in interested in model-based reinforcement learning. So model-based RL is uh, kind of a, a rapidly advancing field of research in reinforcement learning right now and has the promise for a much greater efficiency making reinforcement learning actually practical for a task where it's expensive to collect experiences. Users are um, interested in complex multi-agent use cases, um, both for uh, research and also applied use cases. And uh, as, um, as models have advanced in the deep learning uh, field, uh, users are interested in leveraging uh, more, more powerful models, such as uh, transformers that uh, you know, self-attend across uh, time or, or, um, or for models for handling complex observations. So what are we doing about this? Um, uh, well, I'm happy to say that uh, with RLib 1.0, uh, PyTorch now has 100% parity with uh, RLib TensorFlow. Actually, we have actually more uh, more PyTorch algorithms in TensorFlow now because it's just simply easier to add new algorithms in, in PyTorch. Uh, for model-based reinforcement learning in, in RLib 1.0, we have MBMPO and, and Dreamer uh, fully implemented and tested. And to support some of these more complex use cases, we're adding two new APIs. Uh, first is the new distributed execution DSL that I described uh, in previous slides. This is uh, fully stable and is now the new way to write distributed algorithms in RLib. And uh, we're also uh, adding a new trajectory view API that allows, um, that's going to allow high performance models um, uh, such as uh, transformers and LSTMs to, to work very seamlessly. So in summary, uh, RLib is uh, the scalable and unified RL library. Uh, it has a number of new capabilities with Ray 1.0. Um, so if you're interested in using RLib or uh, getting involved, you can check out our documentation or Slack at RLib.io. Um, and we're also uh, hiring for RLib and uh, Ray development at any scale. Yeah. Thank you.